54, Coast Chevrolet, Costa Mesa. More stimulating AM640, Bill Handle here on a Friday morning, February 18th. A lot of news going on. He's in a dry line. We are huddling and are trending. California has become the first state to formally shift to an endemic approach to COVID. And the governor has a plan that emphasizes prevention and quick reaction over mandated masking and business shutdowns. And the difference between an endemic and pandemic. And an endemic is something that's all that is with us. Uh, it's controllable, uh, it doesn't go up, doesn't go down very much, so much like the flu, the flu season. We sort of know uh, what's going to happen. That is an endemic, and that is uh, where uh, where we are. We should go straight. And then uh, right now, uh, Tim Potter, and a police officer, shot at Deontay Wright, right member of the computer, handgun for the taser. Uh, she's sentenced, well, sentenced today to a manslaughter. Oh, okay. Statements are uh, being uh, impacted and statements are being heard by the court and family members and friends. And uh, that's, that's something relatively new, the impact statements. That have been around for only a few years. Uh, we, uh, I have talked about this before, and that is the uh, polarization of the country. Our people, our parties, and the Republicans and Democrats, conservatives with liberals, uh, it has become so wide in terms of this chasm, uh, chas the chasm, uh, that uh, it's as if we're not we're not only not talking to each other, we're different species. And here you have a state, California, that is wildly liberal, and then you go to the southern states, which are in many cases wildly conservative. And the laws fall along. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about guns, uh, and not gun control per se, because that conversation was done in less than a long time ago. Even states that are extraordinarily liberal, like California, uh, the issue of gun control is actually a major starter. It just doesn't happen. Uh, even arguing about uh, assault type weapons, uh, restrictions of the magazines, etc., that doesn't go anywhere. But let's move over to Tennessee, because I want to share with you a story about Tennessee. And I think it says a lot about state legislators and legislatures. Uh, and we know that, especially in the abortion cases, for example, you've got states that are making it so restrictive that Roe versus Wade is going to disappear completely. We have a fairly liberal government. We have, a, of course, a president that is to the left. We have a House that is uh, fairly liberal, democratic, but just by a hair. And we have a uh, Senate that's evenly split. So that seems to be the politics here. When it comes to the states, uh, the southern states are very right wing, and the legislatures of the various states, the 50 states, are far more conservative than not. As a matter of fact, the entire conservative movement is relying on state legislatures. And for example, abortion, uh, also in the issue of advocating Second Amendment rights. And herein lies a story about Second Amendment rights and Second Amendment advocates in the state of Tennessee, just to give an example of politics around the country. So, uh, legislation was introduced in the Tennessee state legislature this month, and even the police are spinning on this one uh, because they are saying that, and gun control advocates saying, wait a minute, this is the wild thing. Two bills are going through, both in the Assembly and the Senate. And what it would do is amend Tennessee law and designate a person who has been issued an enhanced handgun carry permit. Uh, an enhanced permit is someone who has taken eight hours worth of training in a, uh, a training facility or a basically a training room for an instructor and it's licensed to carry a gun. It's an open carry state. Uh, so you just carry a gun, don't carry a gun on your person, you wouldn't have done that. If you're a weapons permit, you're simply part of it. If you are issued one of these permits, 